Good evening and thank you for joining us on India Business Hour. I'm Parikshit Lutra and here are the headlines we are tracking at this hour. The production-linked incentive scheme is yet to pick up across many sectors, barring pharma and mobile phone, says Chief Economic Advisor Ananta Nageshwaran. Cites government data which shows speciality steel, automobile, drone and white goods have not received any investment so far. BSU banks report a strong second quarter. Profits grow 50%. Loan growth is over 19%. Asset quality also improves, with gross uh, non-performing assets declining by nearly 16%. Sensex and Nifty hit the highest levels in 10 months as bulls maintain the winning momentum. Bank stocks lead the charge and the Nifty Bank Index hits a record closing high. <clears throat> He also announced uncertainty mark Elon Musk's first week as the new owner and CEO of Twitter. Reports suggest some employees who were laid off are being recalled. Twitter is also banning handles that engage in impersonation after some celebrities changed their display name and tweeted as Elon Musk. A Wall Street Journal report says that Meta is planning massive layoffs later this week. As per the report, the company could notify employees of layoffs as early as Wednesday. Meta reported over 87,000 employees at the end of the last quarter. Apple warns of delay in iPhone shipments after China imposed COVID restrictions on the largest Foxconn factory. Schools are shut in Beijing as the country persists with zero COVID policy and daily infections hit the highest level in over six months. Supreme Court upholds the 10% reservation in government, jobs and educational institutions for economically weaker sections of society in a 3-2 split verdict. BGP and Congress welcome the judgment. DMK calls it a setback and Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Stalin hints at a potential review petition. COP27, the annual climate summit, opens in Egypt with a rallying call asking rich nations to pay up on the $100 billion financing pledge. For the first time, climate compensation is on the agenda to help poor nations that are most vulnerable. And as we count down to the elections in Himachal Pradesh, we take a look at the issues facing apple farmers in the state. A special ground report is coming up. Let's start with the day's market action. Sensex and Nifty hit the highest level in 10 months as earnings season draws to a close. Bank stocks led the rally with the Nifty Bank Index ending at a record closing high. In the currency market, the rupee traded in a narrow band against the dollar. Indian currency continues to hold its ground against the greenback amid easing crude prices and upbeat domestic stock markets. As things stand, one US dollar continues to cost more than 82 rupees. Chief Economic Advisor Anantha Nageshwaran said, India needs to use forex reserves judiciously to ensure it has some firepower left for 2023 as well. We should in the short run allow the rupee to depreciate gradually and we should use foreign exchange reserves judiciously keeping the firepower for 2023 as well. India's Chief Economic Advisor Anantha Nageshwaran was speaking at the annual session with the Indian Chamber of Commerce, citing latest data. He said the production-linked incentive scheme is yet to pick up steam across all sectors. CA said only pharma, mobile phones have done well so far. The PLI schemes were announced in 2020 and 21, but there is going to be more expansion and more likely to grow momentum. Right now, it is happening in two or three areas, mobile phones, pharmaceuticals, as well as chemicals, but it has to pick up steam in other areas as well. And hopefully in the next two years, it will happen. The CEA was citing data from the DPIT as of September this year. The data shows pharmaceutical drug manufacturing has achieved 107% of the investment target that the government had envisaged. However, only 13% of the employment target has been realized. So far, the other relative outperformers are also linked to pharma with active pharma ingredients and medical devices faring better than some of the other sectors on both parameters. Mobile phone manufacturing has realized 38% of the investment target, but only 5% of the employment target. Food products sector, meanwhile, has achieved 54% of the investment target and 49% of the employment target. It must be noted that pharma PLI schemes 
were among the first off the blocks as it was launched in 2020. In sharp contrast, Electronics PLI, which was launched in April 2020, has achieved less than 5% of the stated investment target and less than half a percent of its employment target of the PLI schemes launched in 2021. Speciality steel, automobiles, drones and their components have not seen any investment so far. White Goods PLI scheme has seen 13% of its investment goal being met and 16% of its employment target. However, two schemes launched in 2022 have seen some traction. Solar panels have seen 27% investment and 8.5% of the employment target achieved so far. Textile PLI has also seen about 7% of its investment goal being met, though no employment under the scheme has been generated so far. And as the earnings draw to a close, PSU banks have stood out. All the 12 state-run banks reported a profit in Q2 with a combined growth in profit at more than 50%. Asset quality also improved with GNPA declining by nearly 16%. In fact, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman tweeted that government's efforts to reduce NPAs and strengthening the health of public sector banks is showing tangible results. Abhishek Kutari is here with the PSU Bank report card. Uh, well, Q2 FI23 has been an operationally strong quarter for the PSU banks. The loan growth has been pretty robust at about 19% YOI and about close to 5% sequentially, which means that they have gained market share, both YOI and quarter on quarter. So the operating profit growth is very healthy at 18% YOI and about 32.1% sequentially, largely led by the fact, uh, you know, net interest margin has expanded for majority of these PSU banks on a sequential basis. And the trading losses that they had in Q1 has actually reversed for many of them. So uh, PAT is up about 50.4% YOY and about 65.7% sequentially. While the operating profits are healthy, the declining credit costs have actually helped the earnings momentum for PSU banks. So the return on advances that I've calculated is at about 1.35%, up from 0.85% in the previous quarter and up from 1.07% in the same quarter last year. In absolute value, their gross NPA is down 15.9% YOY and about 13% sequentially and their net NPA is down about 29.3% YOY and 13% sequentially. So calculation does show that, you know, their gross NPA ratio is now at 6.5% when compared to 7.5% in the previous quarter and their net NPA ratio is at 1.65% when compared to around 2% in the previous quarter. So overall, the core provision uh, coverage ratio has also strengthened by 100, 120 basis point on a sequential basis. Back to you. All right. Thanks, Abhishek, for joining us. In the earnings space, PB Fintech saw its uh, losses narrow to 184 crores rupees in the second quarter of the fiscal. The parent company of Policy Bazaar and Pesa Bazaar saw its revenue more than double on a year-on-year -year basis. Top international story now. Chaos and uncertainty continues to loom over Elon Musk's led Twitter. The company announced that users will have to pay $8 to subscribe to Twitter Blue. And reports say the company will officially launch the update after the US midterm elections. As things stand, Twitter Blue subscriptions will go live in the US, UK, Australia, New Zealand and Canada. But these are not the only changes that have been made to the app. Reports say some employees that were laid off are not being recalled, reducing joins us now with the latest details and developments. Well, updates coming in thick and fast in the world of Twitter. So let me bring you up to speed with some of the recent developments. Number one, uh, remember last week, Twitter had laid off almost half of its workforce. But now a Bloomberg report suggests that the company is recalling at least a dozen of the employees, which it said were fired by mistake. And it realized that they're essential to build some of the features that have been promised in Twitter. Uh, number two, the $8 for verification of blue tick debate that rages on with several people, including the likes of Mark Cuban, suggest to Elon Musk that exceptions be made but for now the stand is very clear from Elon Musk who says if you want a verification eight dollars is what you will have to cough up number three there are new rules for suspension because comedy doesn't seem to be so legal on Twitter anymore a lot of parody accounts have been suspended and Elon Musk has clearly stated that if you change your name on Twitter the verification will be temporarily suspended and if handles are impersonating other people without saying their parody accounts they will also face a permanent suspension 
notification as well. New features also being rolled out on Twitter, for instance, uh, it'll soon uh, uh, you know, give users the ability to attach long form text to tweets. And secondly, there will be more content monetization for all sorts of creators. And lastly, in response to a question on when Twitter Blue will be rolled out in India, Elon Musk responded saying, hopefully within a month's time. All right, thanks, Ritu Singh, for joining us. So lots changing in Twitter every day and some of the decisions being rolled back as well. The government, meanwhile, is not really concerned about whether or not Twitter charges a $8 subscription fee as long as they comply with the law of the land. This is what Minister of State for Electronics and IT, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, told my colleague Ashmit Kumar. If he wants to make Twitter uh, less relevant in India, have a smaller audience, that is his cho choice. So I don't think, and from what my limited understanding, it's not like he's on my speed dial or I know him well or any of that. Uh, I don't think he's saying that people will not have, have access, free access to internet. Mm -hmm. He's only saying that the verified access will be a blue tick access for which he will charge a premium. Uh, but it, that doesn't bother me and I don't want to get into the race of being, you know, the sound bites on his, uh, his tweet and I'll retweet and then somebody else will tweet. I don't, I don't think our government is into that. And Twitter employees are not alone, unfortunately. Even Meta is planning to cut its workforce by a significant number. According to the Wall Street Journal, parent Meta is likely to begin large-scale layoffs starting Wednesday. The move is expected to impact thousands of employees and mark the first major retrenchment drive in Meta's history. Production of iPhones has taken a hit after the largest Foxconn factory in China was locked down due to rise in COVID cases. Apple has also warned its customers longer wait times when ordering devices. China's zero COVID has also forced schools in Beijing to shut down. This comes after daily infections hit the highest level in over six months across China. Eunice Yoon brings us the latest. Eunice. Foxconn, which is the Apple supplier uh, that has been handling um, a very difficult situation for itself at its iPhone factory here in China, or at least one of the major ones, uh, said that it's going to revise down its uh, Q4 forecast. This is traditionally a very important time for the Taiwanese company. However, uh, it said that it was going to have to do so because of the COVID curbs. Um, even so, they said that it's trying to manage the fallout as best it can. Uh, in a statement, Foxconn said it's working with the government to resume full capacity as quickly as possible. Now, that means improve, improve, to improve the uh, conditions at the factory to make sure that it's just much more livable for people who have to work and live there. Also, they said that they're going to be ramping up a recruitment drive. So uh, Foxconn says that they're going to be reorganizing the facilities to further restrict the movement to between the factory and the dorms. They're also offering one-time bonuses for anybody who wants to return to the factory in order to try to ramp up what they're seeing as a, a worker shortage there. And they're also, of course, uh, trying to encourage more people, new workers, into the plant by offering a salary hike of 20%. And back home, the Supreme Court has upheld the 10% reservation in government jobs and educational institutions for economically weaker sections of society in a 3-2 split verdict. The court held that the 10% quota does not violate Constitution's basic structure by taking economic criteria in account. So what essentially constitutes the economically weaker sections? Those not from the SC, ST or OBC community and with an annual family income below 8 lakh rupees may be eligible. The centre had earlier told the Supreme Court that 8 lakh is a reasonable threshold. Ashmit Kumar and Abhishek Datta Roy explained the ramifications and reactions to this landmark verdict. In a decision that could have major political ramifications, the Supreme Court today upheld the constitutional validity of the 103rd Amendment that grants 10% reservation in government jobs and public and private educational institutions to economically weaker sections among non-scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. A 3-2 to two split verdict by the Supreme Court upheld the validity of the amendment which had come into effect in January 2019, months before the Lok Sabha elections. However, the court also observed that reservations cannot continue indefinitely and should be revisited for a casteless, classless society. A slew of petitions had challenged the amendment on the ground that it propagated the principle of exclusion. Petitioners argued that economic classification cannot be the sole basis for reservation. The petitions were referred to a five-judge constitution bench in August of 2020. 
Chief Justice UU Lalit and Justice Bhatt dissented. He held that the 10% quota is violative of the Constitution of India. Justice Bhatt held that excluding the SCST OBC community from the EWS is violative of basic structure of the Constitution. However, their views did not have a bearing on the overall judgment. Justice Bhatt even went to the extent of quoting Swami Vivekananda saying, if anyone dreams of exclusive survival of own religion and destruction of others, I pity him, end quote. The Bharatiya Janta Party and Congress have welcomed the Supreme Court judgment. The Tamil Nadu Chief Minister MK Stalin led DMK, which was one of the parties in the case, however, has termed the judgment as a setback to the century-old fight for social justice. Stalin said that they would consult legal experts to chart out the next course of action. The centre has already justified an annual income of 8 lakh rupees as the threshold for the EWS quota. Well, legal experts are calling this a landmark verdict that will have a bearing on the dynamics of both caste as well as class. However, there are still two issues that need to be considered. Number one, states such as the state of Tamil Nadu are dead opposed to the implementation of the EWS quota. Therefore, that raises the question of the execution and the implementation of this quota on the ground. Number two, the Supreme Court has raised the broader question of whether or not reservations are at all required, saying that a reservation is not an end in itself, rather a means to an end and therefore raising the question on whether or not there should be a timeline for phasing out reservation altogether, and in doing so, sparking a much larger debate. In New Delhi, Ashmit Kumar. In time for a short break, but coming up, Himachal Pradesh elections are just around the corner. What are issues faced by apple farmers in the state? A special report on the other side. आपको फैलने से रोकना मुश्किल है पर नामुमकिन नहीं अब फायरवॉल टेक्नोलॉजी के साथ सेंचुरी प्लाइट क्लब प्राइम आग से बचाए पूजा यू लेफ्ट द जॉब एंड स्टिल सो कूल ब्रो न्यू चैलेंजेस ब्रिंग न्यू अपॉर्चुनिटीज ओ रियली सीरियसली राहुल माय एंटायर हाउस नाउ इट्स एन ऑनलाइन रिटेल स्टोर लुक वाओ बट मनी Few years back, I'd invested my Diwali bonus. And now you have LIC's Ulip Plan Nivesh Plus. Invest once, get the benefit of both life insurance and maximized returns based on market trends. One sec, Rahul. Madam, you are double cool. How about listening to global market maestros before crafting your investment strategy? How about getting deep insights into their businesses from top Indian honchos before putting your money on the line? How about making every trading day profitable with strategies from the market masters, macro pundits, and chart wizards? Only one show gives you a head start to your trading day. Get ready to profit. Get ready for business with Bajar at these times on CNBC TV 18 and CNBC TV 18.com. आग को फैलने से रोकना मुश्किल है पर नामुमकिन नहीं अब फायरवॉल टेक्नोलॉजी के साथ सेंचुरी प्लाइट क्लब प्राइम आग से बचाए COP27, the annual climate summit, has kicked off in Egypt with a rallying call asking rich nations to pay up on the $100 billion financing pledge. For the first time, climate compensation is on the agenda to help poor nations that are most vulnerable. The Director General of the World Trade Organization said she is hopeful something concrete on climate financing will come out of COP27. I do think we should come out of COP27 with some specifics on the financing side. And um, it's the famous 100 billion that was supposed to go to developing countries by 2020. That, that, that deadline has been missed several times. I hope that we will see progress here at COP27. We know that there are issues of uh, discussions of loss and damage and how that will be handled. Uh, but I also understand that there will be, there may be, uh, some progress on announcing specific packages for developing countries and emerging markets to at least help them phase out of coal. With influence in nearly a third of the state's constituencies, the apple-growing community are a very important factor when Himachal Pradesh goes to polls on the 12th of November. 
These apple growers are said to be unhappy with the ruling BJP, while the Congress and AAP claim to have some solutions. Santhi Gorea gets us a reality check from the bold-bound state of Himachal Pradesh. Himachal Pradesh is known for its apple orchards. The fruit crop plays a major role in the state's economy. India's overall apple production is 2.4 million metric tons, out of which over 26% comes from Himachal. Apple production generates revenue of around 5,000 to 5,500 crore rupees in Himachal, contributing around 5% to the state's GDP. But the industry has been going through a tough phase for the last few years. 47-year-old Rinku Chauhan grows apple on his 8-acre orchard. The increasing cost of production has hit his earnings. जो 800 का कट्टा था मतलब जैसे मान के वो आज मतलब डबल हो चुका है सीधा 1500 रुपए वो खाद का कट्टा हो चुका है वो सीधा कार्टन है कार्टन का भी ये मतलब 20-30 परसेंट तो कम से कम उतना तो बढ़ा ही अभी एक साल में वो महंगा हो गया है तो इससे मतलब हमारे खर्चा बढ़ गया है लागत ज़्यादा है मतलब इनकम कम है मतलब मार्केट में जो से हमारे जो जा रहा है वो उस दाम में नहीं जा रहा जैसे जाना चाहिए था वो पैसा नहीं मिल रहा है देर आर मल्टीपल इशूज एट प्ले but gst on packaging material which went to 18% as compared to 12% pre gst is blamed as a big issue there were covid lockdowns which interrupted exports and then this year's bumper crop hit prices and revenues yahan 18 private companies kaam kar rahi hai unke damon mein fluctuation hoti rehti hai bar bar marketing system ka koi control government ka nahi hai kabhi dam badh jate hai kabhi ghat jate hai aur hamara ek aur mang hai ki bhi yahan nyunatam mulya jo hai seb ka tay kar diya jaye the community is also unhappy with the growing influence of organized private players apple growers believe that the private players are allowed to operate without proper checks and balances in terms of the final prices that the farmers fetch they do impact uh, if you look at the yoy scenario uh, the prices by the large players were set around 72 rupees per kg last year that was brought up to about 76 rupees uh, per kg this year and then with the supply glut coming into the market uh, that was revised downwards the ruling bjp believes that it has done everything to help the apple farmers aise <laughs> mein कोशिश की है हमने जो मदद कर सकते थे जिस रूप में कर सकते थे जितनी कर सकते थे वो हमने करने की कोशिश की इसमें सभी तरह के बागवान थे ऐसा भी नहीं था ये राजनीतिक दृष्टि से कुछ लोग इकट्ठा होकर के इसको मुद्दा बनाने की फिराक में थे दो द कांग्रेस इज क्लेमिंग दैट इट विल पे स्पेशल अटेंशन टू द नीड्स ऑफ एप्पल ग्रोअर्स द पार्टी डजंट सीम टू हैव अ कांक्रीट प्लान we will form a committee a high powered committee which will be headed by the chief secretary and all the members of the progressive growers and associations they will be part of it and they will be the one who will take a call on the minimum support price the apple growing community realizes that as of now these parties are making tall claims and unrealistic promises the apple growing community of himachal pradesh has its influence on 20 out of 68 constituencies of the state the community is one of the most significant vote bank of himachal pradesh and that's exactly why all these political parties are trying really hard to impress them all these political parties are making all sort of claims and promises but the community is still waiting for these parties to come up with an actual concrete plan to resolve their issues in kharapatar himachal pradesh with camera person balbir singh this is santhya for cnbc tv 18 all right uh, do tune in for santhya gora's stories here on cnbc tv 18 from pole bound himachal pradesh uh, time now for a special report now from uh, the court corner Chief Justice of India Justice UU Lalit bids farewell to the Supreme Court after a brief tenure of 74 days. Justice D.Y. Chandrachud is set to take over as the 50th Chief Justice later this week. Ashmit Kumar takes us through the highlights of CGI Lalit's career and what we could expect from the next CGI. Justice UU Lalit after his 37 years in the Supreme Court as a lawyer and then as a judge is finally hanging up his boots. He may have spent 37 years in the Supreme Court but his tenure as CGI was a brief one 74 days. He took charge on August 27th and technically is retiring tomorrow but he is demitting office today tomorrow's a holiday on account of Guru Nanak Jayanti. Now he joined the bar as a lawyer in 1983 and was designated as a senior advocate in 2004. His specialization was criminal law. He counts uh, the likes of Amit Shah, Salman Khan, Captain Amrinder Singh, Navjot Singh Sidhu and former UP Chief Minister Kalyan Singh 
as his clients. In 2014, he was elevated as a Supreme Court judge, only the sixth advocate to have earned it. As a Supreme Court judge, he struck down Triple Talaq as unconstitutional, overturned a Bombay High Court order that held that unless there is skin-to-skin -skin contact, no sexual assault has taken place. He also watered down the SCST Act, causing widespread protests, with Parliament having to pass a separate act to undo the damage. Now, his tenure as CGI was brief, but was not short of action and excitement. Now, the biggest judgment was the Supreme Court upholding the 10% quota for people from economically weaker sections. Interestingly, he held that it was against constitutional norms, but was in a minority. His tenure also saw the first ever live streaming of court proceedings. He was also known to be a taskmaster, listing almost 17,000 cases in the first two weeks alone of his tenure. At one point, Justice Call, the third senior most judge of the Supreme Court, complained of not getting enough time to hear cases. He also constituted 25 constitution benches to decide key questions, including EWS, demonetization, free speech for ministers, and the WhatsApp privacy policy case. Now, Justice Lalit's term was also marked with friction in the collegium, with his successor, Justice Chandrachur, not seeing eye to eye on promoting a few select judges to the Supreme Court. But speaking of his successor, Justice Chandrachur is set to take charge on 9th of November. He will be India's 50th Chief Justice. His father, Y.V. Chandrachur, was India's 16th Chief Justice. They will be India's very first father-son CGI duo. He's likely to have a long term stretching across two years. Among his more notable judgments was the one that struck down Section 377 that criminalized consensual sex between homosexuals. He also struck down exclu exclusion of women from the Sabrimala temple. He was the sole dissenter in the Supreme Court verdict that upheld Aadhaar. He had red flag lack of safeguards as well as the possibility of surveillance under the Aadhaar regime. He also overruled his own father's judgment of 1976 to uphold privacy to be a fundamental right. However, he has also been subject to criticism. He received flack for paving the way for construction of Ram Mandir in Ayodhya as a part of the five-judge bench. He also dismissed a plea seeking a probe into the allegedly mysterious death of Judge Loya. There was also a complaint filed before the President and the Chief Justice against him. The complaint had alleged uh, that he passed orders to help his son's clients. It also alleged that his orders during COVID helped vaccine manufacturers with illegal gains. On the road ahead, he's likely to have his hands full. Justice Lalit sought to revive hearings in various cases that were lying dormant for a while. As a result, the next two years could see hearings on issues such as electoral freebies, Citizenship Amendment Act, electoral bonds, uniform civil code, population control, as well as the 2016 demonetization exercise. Justice Chandrachur has been making headlines long before his elevation as CGI. Chances are that he will be subject to even further scrutiny as he handles sensitive issues affecting political leaders and individual and minority rights. All right, that was Ashwin Kumar summing up Justice Yuyu Lalit's tenure as CGI and also a judge at the Supreme Court and also laying out for you the cases that will come before Justice D.Y. Chandrachud, who will take over as Chief Justice on Wednesday. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of India Business Hour. Thank you for watching. News continues right here on CNBC TV 18.